So how would you answer this question? If the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, what is the pressure of the gas in a manometer if the mercury column is 60 millimeters higher on the atmospheric side? Well, let's find out. Let's draw a picture. So in this bulb, it's going to contain the gas. And this side is going to be open to the atmosphere. And we're going to have mercury inside this container. And the mercury column is 60 millimeters higher on the atmospheric side. So this is the atmospheric side. It's open to the atmosphere. So mercury has a a grayish color to it. So I'm going to use a light gray color. So the height difference between these two points is 60 millimeters of mercury. So what is the pressure of the gas in the manometer? based on this picture, what would you say? Now keep in mind, the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Now all you have to do to calculate the gas pressure is you either have to add or subtract 60 from this number. So the answer is either 760 plus 60 or 760 minus 60. So it's either 700 or 820. So what you need to determine conceptually is that, is this pressure greater or less than the atmospheric pressure? How can we tell? And we can tell based on the height of the column. Pressure is defined as force per unit area. So the atmospheric pressure is exerting a force on the surface of that fluid. The gas also exerts a pressure on that fluid as well. So which one is stronger, the atmospheric pressure or the gas pressure? Now both of them are pushing down on this fluid. So who's stronger? Which one is pushing down more on the fluid? And you can tell based on the level of the fluid. Now let's say if the mercury was at the same height. Let's say there was no height difference. If it's at the same height, then they both exert an equal force on the mercury column. Now let's say if the height is different. Let me give you two scenarios. Now notice that the gas on the left exerts more pressure than the gas on the right because it's pushing down on the mercury column more than the right side. So therefore the pressure is going to be higher on the left side because it pushes down on the fluid more. Now on the right side, the gas on the right pushes more than the gas on the left because this fluid is pushed down more than the left side. So this pressure is going to be higher. So in our example, this level on the left is lower than the level on the right. So therefore, the gas is stronger than the atmospheric pressure. So to calculate the gas pressure, it needs to be greater than 760. So we're going to add 60 to 760. So the gas pressure is going to be 820 millimeters of mercury. Now let's answer the second part of the problem. If the mercury column is 50 millimeters lower on the atmospheric side, what's going to be the pressure? So once again, let's draw a picture. So we have the gas on this side. 
any atmospheric pressure on the right side. So this time we're going to have a picture that looks like this. So the height difference is 50. So because this side, the right side, is lower than the left, the pressure on the right side is greater. The atmospheric pressure pushes down more than the gas does. Now the atmospheric pressure is still 760 millimeters of mercury. And so if the gas pressure is weaker than that, and we know the difference is 50, so it has to be 760 minus 50, which in this example is 710 millimeters of mercury. So that's how you can use a manometer to measure the pressure of a gas inside. You need to know the atmospheric pressure, and then based on the height difference, you can either you can calculate the gas pressure by either adding or subtracting to it. So the pressure of the gas is going to be the pressure of the atmosphere plus or minus the pressure of the mercury column, which I'll put P H G to describe it. So you just gotta add, either add or subtract based on if the gas pressure is stronger than the atmospheric pressure or if it's weaker. Now let's say if you have a container that contains mercury. And let's say if you take an empty test tube and you place it upside down in this container. What's going to happen? Will the mercury column begin to rise? Now compare that situation if you have another container with mercury. But this time, let's say you fill the test tube with mercury, and then once you do that, you quickly place it upside down onto this container. So what's going to happen? Now, nothing's going to happen here. The mercury will not go up. Now, in this example, the mercury may either go up or it may go down based on its height. Let's say if the atmospheric pressure is currently 760 millimeters of mercury. And let's say if you place 720 millimeters of mercury. So that's the current height inside. This will go up from 720 to 760. Now let's say if you place more than 720. Let's say if there was 800 millimeters of mercury. This will go down from 800 to 760. So why does it change when you fill it with mercury first and then quickly invert it into this container where it doesn't change if you don't put mercury in the beginning. Why is that? Because here, if you put mercury, it can either increase or decrease until the height of the mercury column matches the atmospheric pressure. So why does it change in this scenario, but not in this scenario? What do you think? The answer has to do with what's inside of the empty test tube. Now you might be thinking, well, if the temp tube is, <laughs> excuse me, if the test tube is empty, then there's nothing inside. Even though it appears to be empty, there is something inside. There's gas molecules that are invisible to your eyes. They're so tiny you can't see them, but in the air we know that there's gas molecules. So in this so-called empty test tube, there are gas particles inside. And so you have gas outside of this barometer, and you also have gas particles on the inside. Now, because this container is open to the atmosphere, 
the pressure of the gas inside is 760. And the pressure of the gas outside that's in the air is 760. So therefore, if the pressure on the outside and on the inside is the same, then those gases on the inside and on the outside, they're going to exert the same pressure on the surface of these two fluids, on the inside and on the outside. And therefore, this column will not rise, nor will it descend, because there's gas particles already present inside that test tube. Now, when you place mercury inside the test tube, any gas particles inside that was already present, the mercury displaces those gas particles. So all you have in the bottom is just mercury. You don't have any gas particles inside. So when you quickly invert it, what you have here is a vacuum. There's no gas particles. And so as a result, all you have is the pressure of the atmosphere exerting a force on the surface of this fluid. And there's no gas to exert on that fluid. So the only force that's been exerted at this point is the weight of the mercury. Now, when the weight of the atmosphere, or the gas particles in the atmosphere, is equal to the weight of the mercury, the column will be 760. So if I started with 720, then this force exerted by the gas is going to be greater than the weight force of the mercury inside the column. And so there's going to be a net upward force that's going to lift this up until it reaches 760. Once it's at a height of 760, the weight force of the mercury inside the test tube is going to equal the weight of the atmosphere that's exerted on the surface of that fluid. And so it's not going to change. But if I start at 720, it's going to increase to 760. If I start at 800, then the weight force of the mercury will be greater than the weight of the gas. And so mercury is going to push down fluid until it reaches equilibrium, where the weight of mercury has a pressure of 760 and the weight of the atmosphere has a pressure of 760. So if you want to make a barometer, you need to fill the test tube with mercury first, and then you need to flip it. And the height of the mercury column will be equal to the atmospheric pressure. So if the atmospheric pressure is 740, then this will naturally adjust until it reaches a height of 740. It's going to adjust until it's equal to the atmospheric pressure. And so the barometer is used for measuring the pressure of the atmosphere. That's this device here. The first device that we talked about in the first problem, that's a manometer, which is used to measure the pressure of a gas. But the barometer is used to measure the pressure of the atmosphere.